and welcome back. In today's tutorial, we will talk about uh, how we can build a fully connected neural network with a multi-layer perception class in Python using PyTorch. So this would be an illustrative example that will show how a simple neural network can provide accurate results if images from the dataset are converted into a vector. So we will use a fully connected ReLU network with three layers and it will be trained to predict the output y from a given input x as usual. So we will be using the C410 dataset and uh, we have covered uh, in, a pre in a post and in the previous video what are data loaders in PyTorch. So to remind you, C410, the C410 dataset is a dataset that consists of 60,000 colored images of dimensions 32 times 32 pixels divided into 10 classes. So I can probably show it here. So these 10 classes are here, airplane, automobile, bird, cat, and so on. And um, we can see here as well, 10 random images from each of the class. So they're, as I mentioned, 32 by 32. So first things first, we will import the necessary libraries. So I will import them down here. So I'm importing the regular torch, torch nn, functional torch vision. We will import the data loader and a confusion matrix for some visualizations and to see how our model performs. After this finishes uh, downloading or importing, we will create a transform. So just to transform it to tensors and uh, we will just import here. We will load in the C410 dataset using the datasets function from torch vision, not function, but module. So we are just passing in the directory where we want to save it. So I'm saving it into this data cipher folder that I pass in here. Then I set for my training that train is equal to true. And for the testing that it is false, I want to download the data if it doesn't already exist. And also I'm applying this transformation from above here. So this will just transform it to tensors. We can now run this. And after the dataset has uh, successfully downloaded, we can now see the shape or the dimensions and also how many we have. So in the training, I'll just place training and then I'll just print here the len of C410 training. And then I will simply just copy this down here and we also have our testing. So C410 test. And as we can see here, we have 50,000 images in the training set and 10,000 images in the test set. Now, if we want to examine our data in more detail, let's check uh, the type of our training data. And here I'll just write type of the C410 train. And it is very specific. It's Torch Vision data set uh, C410. So this is a collection of tensors organized together. And the same will happen if I check out the, the type for the training, the, the training data set, like this. So by using uh, indexing, we can get back a tensor as an output. So like this, CIFAR 10, and let's use the train of zero. And what is interesting here is that this is a tuple of two items. The first item is a 32 by 32 pixel image and the second item is the labeled. So if we unpack this, we can do this the following way. So we have the first one is the image and the second one is the label and of cipher train of zero. And then if we type the type of the image here, we will get a tensor. And if we print out the image, the shape, we'll get 32 by 32 by 3. So it's not grayscale, so it's in RGB. And uh, if we print out the label down here, we can see that it is uh, a label of 6. So what does this number 6 mean? Well, simply, we have 10 classes in this data set. And if you type in c for 10 classes we can gather all 10 classes and then we can just print them out. We will again print out the label and also classes of the label. 
So this here will print out first all the classes. So we have airplane, automobile, bird, cat, and so on. We have our label for this image, which is six, and it says that it, it is a frog. So if we want to visualize this one image from our data set, uh, we will first need, if you look here, we can see that the dimensions are a bit scrambled. We have first the number of channels, then the width, height, and so on. And um, in order to show it using matplotlib, using the plt show command, we first need to show um, the height, width, and then the number of channels. To do that, we will just use the following, so image.permute and just switch up the channels. So we will set 1, 2 and 0. So the 0 means that it will take the 0 uh, zeroed here, the 3, and place it at the index of 2, so 0, 1 and 2. And then if we just run this, we will see our image of our frog here. Now, because we, will, we are going to work with a large number of parameters in this neural network, it makes sense to load training data in batches using the data loader class. So here, I will create a seed so that my data is always the same. And if you try to recreate this code, you will get the same batches as me. So the next step will be creating the train loader. So I'll just call data loader and I'll pass in the CIFAR 10 train that will define early. Also, we will set the batch size to be a big number. For example, let's set it to 100. And we also want to shuffle our data. So shuffle equals to true. So now for the validation or the test, we'll create a test loader, the same as before, and just set it to test like this. But let's set the batch size to be even more. So for example, let it be 500, like, like this. Okay, and now, we can now move on and start building our model. So we'll create a model class called, for example, multi-layer perception, like this. And uh, we will need to set here the NN module or met method. So NN module like this. Now, after that, we will set up uh, the initialization method, the init. So def init like this. And uh, the parameters that it will accept is the input size and the output size of our network. We already mentioned that the images are 32 by 32 by 3. So we will set the input size to have a default value of 32 times 32 times 3. And the output size will be 10. So 10 because we have 10 classes. And now down here we need to do the following. So we will call super on the init. So this will just uh, initialize the NN modules uh, init, fun init function. And uh, the things that we need to define here are the layers. So we will have three layers, a multi-layer perception, and they are like this. So we'll have a fully connected one, a fully connected two, and also a fully connected three. So for example, three layers. You can now add some dropout or something like that, but we will keep it simple with three layers. And then by just calling nn linear here, we will set it to accept the input size and it will output 120 like this. So this is the first layer. I'll just copy and paste it down here. So the second layer will accept, for example, 120 and it will output 84. Here it will accept 84 and the output will be, as we mentioned, the output size, number of classes. And now that we have defined these layers, we need to combine them in some way. So we will define a forward function that will accept a uh, image x as input. This forward function will now process this x using uh, the linear layer one, so fully connected one, x. And we also want to apply the rectified uh, linear unit activation function. So we'll just call f.rally like this. So here we have passed our image into a fully connected layer. It will get an output of 120 and this output will then go into this uh, array function. We need to uh, do this three more times. So F2 and F3 like this. And the last one will not be a ReLU, but instead we will return a log of softmax. So like this to get the probabilities of the class. And we will pass in X and the dimension will be one. So the softmax here will just tell us 
the probabilities of that image belonging to which class. So uh, we pass in an image of a frog, it will give us the probability of that image. It will, for example, say that it is the number 6 or it will belong to the frog class of a 60%, for example, and the rest will be um, split among these other classes. So, okay, that will be that. And now that we have created this, we can now call our model. Again, we will create model equals to the multi-layer perception like this. We have set the default input size and output size, so we will not change that. And let's just print out the model down here. So this is our model that we created, a simple model. Now, the next thing that we can do here is, for example, let's print out the parameters or the number of parameters that each of these uh, layers has. So for parameter in model.parameters like this, we'll just print parameter dot number like this. And this will print out the numbers. And as we can see, the first one we have 368, 400, 640 connections. And we have 120 biases here. And next we have all connections into the next layer and so on. If we were to sum these parameters up, we will see that we actually end up with a number close to 380,000 total parameters. So uh, this could be a motivation for moving to CNN, especially when dealing with image data. So this is just too many parameters to compute. Um, to complete our network, we will. the next thing with the, what we need to do in order to train it we need to create a loss function and an optimizer. So we'll create a criterion like this, and we will be using the nm cross entropy loss. We will apply this particular function because this is a multi-class classification problem. And we'll create a variable called optimizer, which will be torch.optim, torch.optim, dot stochastic gradient descent, and this will calculate the gradients for us. And we will pass in the model.parameters in here and that we want to update. We will set the learning rate to be a number equal to 0 0.01, let's say. And that's it. We now created our loss and also our optimizer. And the last thing that we are going to do before moving on to the training part is to transform the entire dataset with a command view. This function keeps three channels and merges all the remaining dimensions into one dimension with the appropriate size. So for example, images of dimension 64 times 3 times 32 times 32 uh, is going to become, for example, 64 times 372. So it will create a flat image that looks like a vector. So to do this, we will just print out first the first batch in the training loader. So I'll just break here, and if we print out image the shape, it will be the shape that I mentioned, something similar, 100 times 3 times 32 times 32. So 100 is the number of images in this batch, 3 is the number of channels, RGB here, so it is 3, and also we have an image of size, width and height, 32 by 32. So how do we, uh, how do we all uh, transform this to be in the shape that I mentioned earlier? We do the following, so images.view, minus one and set it to be, for example, 372. So this will just flatten. If you take this three, multiply it with 32 and with 32, it will give us this number here. So if we do this, we get the, this shape over here. And now we can move on and start training our model. And now that we have prepared our data, we can now move on to the training steps. So first things first, let's first import the module time so that we can kind of track the time needed for the training. So we will call it start time and it is time the time. So the function is just time as the module. And then after that, we can set up uh, our training. We will set the number of epochs. So epochs will be 10. And for this data set, uh, it will be the optimal amount of training. So it will be enough. Then we will just save uh, the loss for the training. Also, we will save the accuracy, or let's call it correct. Then we will create a test losses, and also test correct. And we will store the values in these lists here. And after that, 
we will start doing the actual training. So we will create a for loop here for i in range of epoch. Then we will create a training correct set to zero and also, also test correct set it to zero. So here we will save the values of the correct and the correct uh, guesses for the testing and the training and we will then uh, divide it with the batch, the size of the batch that it was trained on. After that, we can simply now iterate through the data loader. So for b iter, and then we will extract the x and the y, train, of course. And then we will just enumerate through the train loader. So let me explain what I did here. So it's train loader. So this enumerate will return a number. So for example, if we have 10 batches and it iterates through those 10 batches or 10 values in a list, this B iter will be zero to batch, first batch, second batch, and so on. And the X train and Y train will have our uh, 100 images and 100 labels of those images. So here uh, I will just do Y prediction equals to the model and we will send our uh, training data. And as I mentioned, we need to flatten it. So we know that it is 100 and then minus one. So we have 100 uh, images in one batch and also we want minus one to flatten the image. So this is um, relatively the same as 32 times 32 times three, like this. Then after that, we have our Y prediction. Then we need to calculate the loss. So we will just send to the criterion, the Y prediction and the Y, y train like this. So this is the truth value Y train. And after that, we will make some uh, predictions or we will extract the maximum values of the predictions. So we'll do torch.max and we will pass in the Y prediction, the data. And this way we extracted the data or um, we extracted the probabilities and we want the ones. So this torch.max will return as index zero it will return the actual values. So for example, if we have 0 0.7 and 0 0.3, so 0 0.7 is a probability for the class zero and 0 0.3 is for the class one. So this is our Y prediction data. Uh, index zero will represent these numbers and index one will actually represent the number one he uh, zero here. So it's like this, so zero to class. After that, we can simply move on and calculate the batch correct. So we will just simply do the predicted equals to y train dot sum. So this way we calculated all the predicted values. So this will just go over all the values in this predicted. So if you have 100 uh, predictions, it will go over, over all 100 predictions and compare them to y train. If it's the same, then it will sum those numbers. After that, we'll just do training correct plus equals to the batch correct. And after this finishes, we need to uh, zero gradient our optimizer. So zero grad and down here loss dot backward like this. And uh, when we calculated the gradients, we need to apply them to the optimizer. So optimizer dot step. And this is all for the training. So we have done our training steps. Looking at the code here, I have seen that I have made some mistakes. So here we need to create a list and this is I in range of epochs. So down here, we can just simply do a print. So if the, iter the batch iteration number is uh, the 100, so every 100 batches, we will print out the accuracy. So we will print out the epoch first. So epoch like this, and we will print out the batch. So this will be the big eater. We will print out uh, the loss. So loss loss dot item and we also need to print out the accuracy which we haven't calculated yet so we'll calculate it up here so it will be the training correct multiplied so we'll train correct item multiplied with 100 divided with 100 times the iteration number so be iter like this and we will simply just print it out down here and this is all for the training. We will just save, for example, uh, the training the loss and also the training correct down here. So training the loss 
this we will uh, move inside the batches, the iteration of the batches, and we will append the loss, and also we will append the training correct. Like this. And down here we can now do the testing. So with torch.nograd, we will iterate through the test loaders. So the same principle as here. So this is x test, y test, everything is the normal way through the test loader. And now down here, what we will do, we will send uh, the values into the model. So we will send x test into the model. Remember, we need to reshape it. So the batch size is 500 and the size or the shape of the image needs to be flattened. So 32 by 32 by 3 or minus 1. And um, this way we need to move this in by 1 like this. And now we will extract the maximum. So torch.max of y value dimension 1 and 1 like this. Then we will calculate the correct uh, guesses. So test correct plus equals same as before. So predicted equals the y test here dot sum. And this is all that we need to do. And we will just calculate the loss down here by pushing in the criterion or feeding into the criterion the y value and the y test. We will add to the test uh, losses we will add the loss and test correct, correct, we will append the test correct, like this. So uh, this is it and uh, we want to measure the time, so the total time will be time to time, the current time minus the start time. And we will just print out here the duration, so duration is total time. And we can just uh, place it in minutes, for example, multiply it with 60, and this will be in minutes. And we can now run our code, see if we have any errors. As we can see, we have up here. So what do we have here? So the accuracy is training correct dot item multiplied with 100 divided with times b iter. Okay, I see the error, so B iteration is zero at start, so we want to say uh, there is no, no point in dividing it with zero, so we will add the iteration number to start from one, so one uh, until the iteration number uh, exits. And this is it, so we can try and run it again, hopefully no errors, and as we can see, it is training, starting to train the model, so we will just wait. After this finishes training, we can do some simple visualizations. So to see the loss, we will just print out the training losses. The label will be training loss, like this. And we will also do the same trick, but for the test. And this is test loss. And we will do plt.legend so that the labels show. And we can see that the loss was dropping down. If we had more epochs, it would probably go even more uh, lower. But now let's check for the accuracy. So for the accuracy, we have actually just saved the, the number of correct guesses. So we need to calculate the accuracy. We'll do it the following way so that accuracy will be um, in an inline for loop. So t divided with 500 for t um, in training correct. So we have 500 batches here. And um, we will do the same thing in the test, test accuracy for t in test correct. Just here it will be not, it will not be one, uh, 500 but 100. And we can just plot the accuracy down here. So the training accuracy and the test accuracy. Not the loss, accuracy instead. And we can run it. So we can see the percentage being around 40, 45, let's say, percent. So this is uh, doing on 10 classes, so that's why it is this low. So if we apply the convolution neural network, it would give us uh, even higher accuracy. So that's that thing. And we can now do some testing. So we'll do the following tricks. So we will create a test loader test load all and we will load in 10,000 images. So this is a huge batch size. 
so if you see for 10 test and the batch size will be as I mentioned 10,000 like this and we will disable the shuffle so we will not need it here we will create a loop with torch.nodeRed we will just test our uh, created model or our trained model the number of correct will be zero initially and we will just iterate through all of the test images so x test y test in test load all and down here we will just uh, i can just copy and paste this piece of code from here so y value we will send the x test into the model we need to resize it so it's not 500 but it will be 10,000 or we can do the following trick len of test load all like this or we can just do the trick of x test because we will have multiple of these so 10,000 per batch we need to set the batch size here so len of x test down here this can stay the same and this here can stay also the same just not test correct but correct only and uh, we can print the percentages so of the correctly predicted data with the following code so we just indent this one piece inside and we will just print out 100 times the correct dot item divided with the length of cfr10 test and we can run this so we can see the accuracy of 42 as we have seen uh, previously and we can also create a, a confusion matrix it is also known as an error matrix and it is a specific table layout that allows us uh, the visualization of the performance of the algorithm so we will just do confusion matrix confusion matrix of the predicted dot view minus one and also y test dot view of minus one and just close it and we can see the confusion matrix just uh, an error here so predicted like this and this is our confusion matrix so how do we read this well each column represents a class of a data set and on the diagonals we can see how much data is is uh, how much data is in each class is predicted correctly so here we can see that class is zero reading from here this is class 0 class 0 in the column and this is 506 uh, correctly guessed 40, 404, uh, 443 correctly guessed and so on on the diagonal down here and that's simple, a simple way how to read uh, the confusion matrix all of these are uh, wrongly classified the data so only in the diagonal are the correctly classified classes and now we will check the predictions for one image from the data set so here we will create a uh, variable called image and we will just take out images of zero we will also flatten it to be 372 3072 and then we will disable the gradient calculation with torch no grad we will then create some predictions so model prediction equals model dot forward on the image and we can run this and then I will just copy and paste a piece of code down here so that I don't have to type it but essentially what it does it applies the softmax to get the probabilities of this model prediction um, it detaches all the gradients but there shouldn't be any left because of this torch no grad or maybe some will go get, uh, get away but for uh, precautions only we will detach them send it to CPU NumPy and also squeeze them and this way we get our probabilities we will create some plots and show them so looking down here these are our probabilities so it it says that it is class 3 so we can see here 0 1 2 3 so this is the highest probability that we get and it uh, thinks that it's this class here so uh, we can also check out what this class is so classes of 3 it should be a uh, it missed for this example here so it says 3 but it is not 3 it said that it's a cat so we can try uh, another image so for example here we can just um, run this once more 
So where did I get these images from? Images. Uh, we got it from here, so somewhere, yep, up here. So we will just run this again. And then down here, let's try it again. So run it, send it and get the probability. So it says that it is most probably again class three, which is a cat. So by looking at the image here, I see that it is a cat. So it says that it is either a cat or a dog, but high probabilities for a cat. Okay. And we can finally plot our images and the predictions. So if the prediction is correct, we will label uh, the image in blue. And if it is not correct, we will label it. Uh, the label will be red. So here we load 64 images into the uh, test load all. And then I will copy and paste another piece of code down here just to be even more faster. So we are just repeating ourselves here, just sending it into the model, taking out um, the NumPy images so that we can show them easily. And I would just copy and paste the code on here. And this piece of code here is just going over all of those 64 images, creating uh, eight by eight plots and showing them uh, with their corresponding class names. So we can see here that the model probably predicted uh, around 50% or maybe a little less than 50% of them correct. So this is how it looks like. So we can see here predicted a cat correctly. So here it is a truck and it predicted it wrong. It predicted a sh ship correct and so on. And this is all here. And that's how we can train our multi-layer perception on the CIFAR 10 dataset. But let's see another addition here. So we will build a shallow neural network. Now we'll build a shallow neural network to classify the MNIST dataset. So we will just add this as an addition down here. So we are downloading the MNIST dataset. I have an error here, so it's not test set, but validation set. Uh, so we are just defining some transformations to tensors. So to send the, the data to tensors and to normalize them, we can see here that it has normalization for one channel only because these images are grayscaled. So that's why it's uh, like this. We can also see this by printing out some statistics or some information down here. So we can see the, that it is a tensor of size 64 times 1 times 28, 28. So it has a batch size of 64 images in one batch and it is grayscale because of this one here and the size is 28 by 28. We can also see one image here. I'll just show the image 42 and we can see that how it looks like. So we can see it is a number zero. And now for the interesting part, we will now create the network. The network looks like this. So earlier, uh, in our multi-layer perception, we had three layers. We had three fully connected layers only. <clears throat> so the input here is 784 in the first fully connected layer. So it is 28 times 28. The image size flattened as before. Just before we had uh, a bigger number. We had multicolor, multicolor or RGB. And the output is 10, which represents the number of classes. So we have 10 classes, the numbers from 0 to 10. And we uh, one addition here is the use of a drop dropout layer. We will use it after each of these uh, after each of these linear layers. So how are we up, uh, using this network? So we accept the image. Now we will accept the full image and we will resize it inside of here. So no need to flatten the image before uh, sending it into the network. The network will, will flatten it for us. Then we are applying first the fully connected one and we are applying the fully connected two, fully connected three. Each of these, those are followed by a ReLU activation function, followed by a dropout layer. And at the end here, we are just applying the fully connected four, which is uh, this layer up here, which outputs a probability of uh, it belonging to one of the 10 classes. We can simply run this. We will initialize our network and send it to the device. But we don't have the device defined. OK, I will just set it to be CUDA because I'm using Google Colab and it says that no CUDA GPUs are available. No problem. So we will set it to go to the CPU, which is always available. 
After this, we need to define the uh, optimizer. So we will be using the stochastic gradient descent here. What do we want to uh, optimize? We want to optimize the model parameters. And after this, we define the criterion. And as usual, we are using cross entropy loss. So this is not defined. Let me see how we define the optimizer in the steps above. So towards the utils and we are uh, using our optimizer right around here. So it, we didn't define it like that. We just need to call torch.optim like this. Let me see if uh, we imported the NN, if everything is good now. And for the training, we will do a simple training as always. I will copy and paste it down here. So what we are uh, eventually doing is that we are create we are looping through all 20 epochs here. We are setting the model to training mode and we are looping through each of these um, batches in the train loader. We are sending everything to the device, but we are using CPU. So I can just simply change this to CPU here like this. We are zeroing the gradients, sending the image to the model, getting a prediction, calculating the loss adding that loss to the total training loss, doing the back propagation and optimizing the optimizer. Down here we are just we just want to calculate the accuracy so we check for each of the images uh, how many are correct and how many are not and we are calculating the accuracy down here. So that's for the training step and down here we have the validation step which is uh, the same as before so we're just setting uh, the model to the evaluation validation mode we're iterating, iterating through the validation loader we are grabbing each of these so we need to set image to cpu not to CUDA, but to cpu and we are here uh, making some predictions calculating the loss uh, calculating the accuracy based on these uh, correct guesses and we are just printing every five epochs. We can run this and hopefully no errors will come up. And I think everything is good. So we just wait for it to execute. As we can see, when the training is finished, we can see that the accuracy was around 94 and on the test set, it was 96%. So let's just plot them down here for better visualization. So we can see that the loss uh, was dropping down and if you let the model train for uh, more epochs, it will drop even more down. Checking the accuracy similarly, we can see the accuracy was rising and it got to a conversion state up here where it started uh, learning slowly. So that's all good. And then we can just do some evaluation of our network. So I'll just take one image. Uh, I'm going to send it into the network and I'm going to do the forward method on the image. And here are the logits. And how can we transform these logits to get some predictions? Well, simply by calling the softmax function. So by calling the softmax function on the logits, we get the probabilities. So we will do the sim a similar thing as before. I will just print out the probabilities and draw, uh, draw them and see, uh, see them on the image. So as we can see here, this is a number five and it guessed it correctly. So it says that it is the number five uh, around one. So it got, got it really good. So it's up here around 99%. So that's how we can check how our model uh, is doing on one image. But then we can also see how it is doing on multiple images. So we're taking out one batch of images and labels from the validation loader. We are going to send it to the CPU like this and send it into our model. So I have an error here. So invalid syntax validation underscore loader. Um, it's not defined. It's not even like this. It's like this. Yep. And so we have our predictions. We can print them out here. And these are the logits. So we are just gonna take the code from before. We're gonna make a plot. So we're making a figure, not a plot. And we're adding uh, eight by eight of images. So 
we can just run this and it will say uh, it will show a blue color up here if it got it correct and a red color like this two here if it got it wrong so we can see here that this is actually a number eight and it got it correct number one one everything is correct correct up here so uh, the only mistake that i can see here is this number seven that it um, predicted as the number two so it predicted because of this line intersecting the number the number seven and that's how it works so it only uh, one out of the 64 images were cla was classified incorrectly. So that's, those are great results overall. And uh, that's it for this tutorial. And if you like this video, drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. We can say that these two videos were, um, so to say, uh, separate topics, but they were very similar and we combined them in one. And that's why we had a multi-layer perception and a shallow neural network in one. Thank you for watching once again and be safe.